गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग सर एक्चुअली डॉक्टर राजन ऑडियो इज नॉट कनेक्टेड सो लेट मी जस्ट कॉल इन Yes, and now your audio is connected. Can you able to hear us? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible and also visible. Okay. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, Guru. How are you? Ah, uh, fine, sir. Fine, sir. Okay. So, shall we start the presentation? As you say, sir, we are ready. Okay. Uh, we need uh, somebody who who would like to discuss also. Uh, any guest to after the. Case presentation by uh, Gaurav. Uh, somebody can uh, discuss the history part. Come to some conclusion. I will also help you to discuss the story, and then after the clinical uh, examination findings, we will have the final diagnosis, or rather, we will have the provisional diagnosis. And with the help of ECG, X-ray, and echo, we will come to the final diagnosis. So, uh, anybody who would like to discuss the case. I think we need one and GS to do it. Srinivasan, would you like to do it? Shashi Gant. I think Hafiz is our best bet. Hafiz. I don't know. Hafiz. Are you there? Hafiz, Rajan, are you uh, willing to discuss the case? Ashrinivasan has been unmuted. Ashrinivas, oh, Ashrinivas, uh, are you? Ashrinivasan, uh, can you uh, take up the challenge of discussing the case? Ah, uh, sure, sir. Okay, I'll try. I'll try my best, sir. Well, I will help you. So we'll have a combined discussion. So that there is no okay. problem at all. All others also can join. So that okay. as the more and more students come in, they can also join. Then only becomes uh, uh, okay. a lively discussion. The slides moving, uh, sir. Okay, I think the slide is too big. Uh, I think. Ah. Uh, I think you can now, make slightly uh, smaller. Now, okay, sir. Ah, uh, I can see, but uh, uh, all right, okay. Uh, just a minute let me get ready <coughs> okay i am ready so yes, we... yes sir sir so with your permission shall i start or you start you start 35 years old female unmarried low oh. middle class socio economic are shrinivasan uh, i have to read you will ask to just uh, help okay uh, hello uh, shrinivas what you have to do is that you can note down points in the story okay. and at the end of the story you can uh, discuss the case and okay, step by step i will help you to discuss the case also uh, okay. the history will be presented by uh, gaurav and uh, if there is any point that we want to clarify from gaurav you can always ask i also will ask so that there is more clarity in the story suppose uh, one point he has not made it very clear we can always ask him what is the uh, 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 we can raise a doubt and he can give us the explanation uh, okay. sir saroj madam has also joined sir yes. oh saroj is there she also will be active in this saroj madam but uh, good evening ma'am saroj ma'am hello Let Srinivas oh. discuss and then Saroj yes, yes, can be part of it. Yes, sir. Srinivas, uh, from which institution are you? Uh, Stanley Medical College, sir. Stanley Medical College. Oh. Are you a finalist? Oh, Srinivas. 
Hello. Which, which year are you, Srinivas? Ah, uh, entering final year, sir. Oh, very good. Oh. Okay. I think oh. I did my UG from Stanley, sir. Oh, great. UG. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Did you do your MD from? MD from Kanpur, sir. Kanpur. 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 You are going all over the country. Eh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not South East. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. Start. Oh, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir. Uh, uh, Our patient is a 35 years unmarried female uh, belongs to lower socio economic group. She is a staff nurse at uh, Trichur Medical College, sir. and uh, she presented to our uh, OPD with uh, chief complaints of dyspnea on exertion for past one year. Now NYHA class three for past for two months, sir. Fatigue and generalized weakness for past six months. Bilateral pedal edema off and on for past three months. Abdominal distension associated to facial puffiness off and on for past two months, sir. Okay. Oh, shall I? Shall we discuss on this, or we can go no, on? No, 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 no. I will ask uh, uh, Shrinivas. Uh, uh, see yes, from sir. the story, uh, what all things would you like to? Uh, the 35-year-old female has come with uh, certain symptoms. Uh, left, uh, left inflow obstruction and uh, outflow obstruction too, sir. Why did you think uh. of inflow? Uh, first of all, you have to think: is it a cardiovascular system disease? Sir, uh, because of dyspnea, fatigue, and uh, cardinal symptoms of uh, uh, heart disease, sir, CVS. So edema, is, all those things they put together is most likely cardiovascular system disease. Cardiovascular. Right side is affected. Right side, left side, both sides. Sir, both sides. It seems to be both sides, sir. Yeah, it is a both sides, the boy side involved. Yes. Which side is affected first? Uh, left inflow, sir. Yeah, because yeah, you know, why did you say inflow? You see, mm-hmm. keep our mind open. Why do you want to come to a diagnosis that is mitral stenosis? Okay, no, you sir. say that you say the left side is affected. Could you pass a bit of left side inflow and the CCF? Now, why did how how can a left side disease uh, uh, progressively within one year? Right side is problem. Within the one year, yes, that is all. Yeah, over a period of one year, she has now yes, uh, she has become quite symptomatic. Yes, sir. And she is thirty-five year female, so that also. She has been uh, completely asymptomatic till one year ago, and uh, mm. she has become symptomatic only for the past one year. So you cannot straight jump into that. Uh, 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 this could be an inflow obstruction. No. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, keep your mind open. Okay, sir. And there is no history of any palpitations also. So that's. Oh, no, but the, the, of course you are given the. Uh, there is no complaints of pal. No complaint of palpitation. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. Yes. Okay. I'll explain everything in the next two slides. No, no, no. Before that, and I say from yes. this, uh, uh, what do you think is the problem? What are the possibilities? Thirty-five-year-old female coming with problems. What are the things which you should cross your mind? Sir, cardiomyopathy. Cardiomyopathy. Uh, I think cardiomyopathy should oh. be definitely considered. Very yes. good. What type of a cardiomyopathy? Dilated cardiomyopathy, sir. Mm. In Kerala, you can always think of a restricted cardiomyopathy also, because EMF. Uh, EMF. I think you can keep EMF as also as a possibility. Biventricular EMF can be considered as a possibility also. But uh, okay, dilated cardiomyopathy, cardiomyopathy, or that's one possibility. Yes. Anything else? Valvular heart disease. Yes, I think valvular heart disease. Okay. Definitely consider. What valvular heart disease would you consider? Uh, mitral stenosis. Yes, mitral valve disease. Mitral valve disease can be considered. Uh, which, one, which one you think is more likely? Is it stenosis or or regurgitation? Stenosis, sir. Stenosis. Why? Sir, uh, in case of stenotic lesion. Uh, Pulmonary vascular, pulmonary venous hypertension occurs, sir. Yeah. So, any patient will develop dyspnea, arrhythmia. Yeah. Yes. Only, only problem is that she is having dyspnea only for the past one year. One year only, sir. Ah. Yeah. So, how can a patient of mitral stenosis develop symptoms at this age? Uh, she is 35 years. She is an active person. She is a staff nurse. So, she has to walk around in the ward. She has never been symptomatic. And she uh, presented with symptoms for the past one year. What are the conditions in which uh, symptoms can be precipitated? What are the situations in which symptoms can be precipitated in a patient with uh, mild to low moderate mitral stenosis? Sir, uh, uh, 
ஹை கார்டியாக் அவுட் புட் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் அனிமியா ஃபீவர் ஓகே இஃப் த பேஷண்ட் இஸ் ஹேவிங் அதர் காம்ப்ளிகேஷன்ஸ் லைக் தைரோடாக்சிகோசிஸ் ஆர் அனிமியா தே கேன் பிகம் சிம்டமேட்டிக் எஸ் வாட் எல்ஸ் அரித்மியா சார் அரித்மியா வாட் ஆர் அரித்மியா ஏட்ரியல் ஃபிப்ரிலேஷன் ஏட்ரியல் ஃபிப்ரிலேஷன் யா ஏட்ரியல் மைட்ரோ ஆல் டிசீஸ் இஸ் associated with atrial fibrillation so atrial fibrillation can precipitate symptoms in a patient with mitosis yes what else and uh, worsening of existing disease or development of new uh, new valvular heart disease okay if the patient had uh, uh, had recurrence of rheumatic reactivation and other valves are also affected or the existing lesion has progressed yes sir okay and uh, see uh, in this patient there is no history of palpitation from the in the history part so yes. so we have to think what has really happened and how can these patients develop right heart failure ah uh, yes sir because of pedal pedal edema and abdominal no, 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 that is there i am asking you what is the pathogenesis of uh, or hemodynamic abnormality which can lead to right heart failure sir uh, passive uh, passive pulmonary uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension and reactive pulmonary arterial hypertension what do you mean by all these things what do you mean by uh, uh, passive pulmonary arterial hypertension reactive pulmonary arterial hypertension and obligatory pulmonary arterial hypertension passive uh, the no, usually uh, in case of increasing uh, la la pressure this proportional increasing uh, pulmonary arterial hyper uh, high pressure sir in why? case of why sir why should the pulmonary artery pressure go up sir because to drive uh, to overcome the la, la pressure sir to yeah. because blood will be blood will flow from an area of higher pressure to an area of no pressure no, no pressure. pressure no pressure so if the blood is to flow from the pulmonary artery to pulmonary vein if the pulmonary venous pressure is going up correspondingly the pulmonary arterial pressure also should Increase. go up. go up. okay right yes and uh, what is the lesion which will ultimately lead to edema of the uh, dependent parts and uh, abdominal distension all those things right heart failure development right of right heart right heart failure development of any valvular lesion like tricuspid stenosis yeah yeah regurgitation usually patients yeah. when they develop pulmonary arterial hypertension they can progressively develop tricuspid regurgitation and it can become more and more pronounced okay so you are thinking that this could be a cardiomyopathy or it could be a valvular heart disease anything else that you think viral viral myocarditis sir yeah i think that is to be definitely considered because she had symptoms only for one year and uh, she might have developed a Uh, viral infection which might have affected the heart resulted in viral myocarditis and progressive symptoms okay so uh, we, we may not be able to go further we'll go further after hearing the story from gaurav okay gaurav go ahead yes so history of presenting in this patient was apparently normal till one, one year back then she started having dyspnea on exertion it was insidious is on onset and gradually progressing according to her she used to go on bicycle from her nurses hostel till 6 months back but her dyspnea has caused her to leave her uh, to leave her cycling and now she is even dyspneic on walking for two blocks of houses in in hostel for past uh, four months it is now progressed to class 3 uh, and why she her dyspnea is also associated with orthopnea for the past two months and she sleeps with two to three pillows below her neck there is no history of proximal nocturnal dyspnea She also states that her dyspnea was associated with bilateral chest tightness and diffuse pain in the muscles below the ribs. It improves on rest and aggravated on exertion. There was no diurnal variation of chest tightness and it was not associated with cough or hemoptysis. There was no associated syncope with dyspnea and no associated with palpitations with dyspnea. Sir. For the past six months, she also feels fatigue and generalized weakness with exertion. It improves on rest and aggravated on exertion. No associated with muscle or limb weakness with it. Sir. For past three months, she is having bilateral petal, uh, bilateral pitting petal edema associated with abdominal distension and facial puffiness off and on for past two months. For these symptoms, she was advised tablet, which caused increased inhalation and some symptomatic relief to her. There is no history of fever, no history of cough, no history of hemoptysis. So there is history of pain of ankle and knee joint for the past two weeks, and she was diagnosed as post-apocal reactive arthritis by rheumatologist. Started on spendids and tapering doses of prednisolone, sir.
Okay. Any any okay. point you would like to ask uh, uh, Gaurav uh, Srinivas? Any points that you would like to ask him? Uh, no, sir. No. Uh, I want, uh, okay, that comes in the personal history. Uh, is there any history yes, of sir. intermittent claudication? No, sir, no, sir, no, no claudication. Claudication mm -hmm. and syncope are not there. No. No, sir. Because uh, uh, claudication of the upper limb, claudication of the lower limbs, any? No, sir. No, no. no. She has not given it. Uh, uh, was, is it important to ask that story? Uh, sir, uh, because of uh, peripheral arterial, arterial disease. What peripheral arterial disease? What disease? A 34 year old female. Yes, sir. We may, sir. Yes, it is important to ask because the patient may be having uh, hypertension, may be having some regurgitant lesion and uh, some autoarthritis. Very good. Something. I think in a 34 year old female who is presenting with symptoms at this age, I think autoarthritis should be in your mind also. Okay. And they can have systemic hypertension. And only one point for autoarthritis is that she has got a right side lesion. Because she has developed a right heart failure. That is not very common with arthritis. That is the only thing. Arthritis can have systemic hypertension, they can have breathlessness, they, they can have uh, claudication symptoms, and symptoms can occur at this age. All of those things uh, are, uh, uh, are, are uh, possibilities. And hence, we should clearly ask for history of intermittent claudication. We have to mostly ask for intermittent claudication of the upper limb. Rather than the lower limb, it should be more of the upper limb. And what are the uh, most important symptoms of iota arthritis where there is obstruction to the subclavian artery to the upper limb? Srinivas? Yes, sir. The subclavian steel syndrome. Steel syndrome. syndrome. Very good. What is subclavian steel syndrome? Explain it. Uh, 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 excessive use of uh, uh, upper limb, hmm. especially sir, left upper limb, hmm. causes sir, giddiness or sir, uh, some uh, uh, dec uh, decreased posterior cerebral circulation symptoms. Hmm. Why is this so? so? This is because of the... Uh, uh, because of the excessive use of the left sub, left upper hand, the left subclavian artery, uh, uh, the blood flow uh, from the vertebral to the left subclavian due to a, uh, sir, uh, the communication from the posterior circulation. Sir. Yes. Where is the usual site of obstruction in aorta arthritis? Sir, usually, sir, it is pre-subclavian, sir. Pre-subclavian? No, sorry, sir. No. Uh, sir, no, no, sir. No. Post subclavian. Post subclavian. What do you mean by post subclavian? No, it is. It is uh, just just uh, just after R region, sir. It is a aortic branches R region side, sir. Just one or two centimeter yeah. after R region. Usually, it's either at the ostium or. Yes. Uh, of the, uh, artery. Or it can be uh, very often one centimeter prior to the vertebral artery. So vertebral artery is usually not involved in the aorta arthritic obstruction. And that will result in when you exercise the, uh, the if the patient is having left subclavian artery involvement and when you are using the left upper limb, left upper, uh, upper limb needs more blood. And for that, the vertebral artery will draw the blood from the opposite vertebral artery. Because they, as you know, the vertebral artery comes together and joins to become what artery? Vertebral artery comes together and it conjugates. This is the this only is where, where always artery branches, gives a branch. This is the only region. The posterior cerebral artery. Basilar eh? artery, sir. Basilar artery. Basilar artery. Basilar artery. It gives rise to the basilar artery which joins the circular bilis. So basilar artery and when there is a, when the patient is exercising the uh, affected limb, it draws the blood from the opposite vertebral artery and because of that the, the cerebral circulation, especially the posterior circulation suffers and that can give rise to a symptom of giddiness and sometimes even loss of consciousness. That is known as subclavian steel syndrome. So, he has said, in general, he has said there is no history of syncope, uh, but he has not specifically asked whether 
whether the patient is feeling any any giddiness when you are asking the when you are using the left or the right upper limb uh gavro you should have asked a story yes sir yes the mathem claudication because if the story will always story presentation will always give a clue to the examiner what is the depth of knowledge of the student so it would have been very important for you to ask whether there is an history of intermittent claudication uh, especially involving yes. the upper limb and also to ask whether there is any history of singham when uh, when she uses her left upper limb or the right upper limb either limb that will help you whether to think whether there could be an aorto arthritis okay uh any other so any other point shrinivas we have to think of the different diagnosis who <coughs> said okay uh, uh, Anyway, we still hear the story also because there are two, three points which I want clarification. One is, of course, whether a patient had any uh, rheumatic fever in uh, early childhood. Second is that she is 34. That past history I am coming, sir. Past history I am coming, sir. Okay, I think past history. Finish that so that we can discuss. No, no, no. Past history. Ah, uh, past history is remaining, sir. Past history okay. is remaining. Oh yes, please. You continue with the past history also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, at 15 years of age, she had a polyarthritis involving major joints and sore throat. She was treated symptomatically and advised for Pendid tablet, which which she took for few months only and then stopped it ab- abruptly without any consultation. So she uh, she is she is hypothyroid for past 10 years, type 2 diabetic for past two five years, obese for 10 years, mood disorders for four years, and history of PCOS for past 10 years. Sir, there is also history of. Uh, Allergic bronchitis on 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 she is on inhaler so on SOS basis. The so treatment history for the past 15 months she has consulted many doctors for dyspnea and other symptoms. She was diagnosed as uh, uh, post septal reactive arthritis by rheumatologist started on HCQS pendits and tapering steroids. History of mood disorder was there and she was started on haropredol and sodium valproate also. She was diagnosed as as OSA by a private physician after sleep study and her apnea index was five to ten which was mild. For PCOS, for PCOS, she is taking metformin and methamphetamine acids. For the pain relief, there is no history of any anti-obesity drugs. Antenatal history, sir. She is a second second child born of a non-consent non-consent was full term normal normal delivery at a private hospital. Cried immediately. Next year discharge. No history of major childhood illness or hospitalization in childhood. Family history: the father died of a cardiac arrest at home at 65 years of age. Her mother is a retired su- nursing superintendent from Government Environment College General Hospital, sir. Uh, elder brother is in software lines. Personal history: menarche uh, attained at 18 is uh, sorry, 13 years of age. Irregular cycles with painful menses of three years uh, of three days on methamphetamine acid SOS. Sir. Coming on to the summary, sir, 35 no, year female. No, 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 don't, don't summarize. A few points I want to ask you. Why did you say that she belongs to a low socioeconomic status? No, 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 low socioeconomic. No. Uh, uh, I, I told. Uh, uh, She must be in the middle income group because her mother is the ah, nursing superintendent. Middle class, school. middle class, middle class only, middle class only. Now I want to ask you, middle why class. is that she did not get married? Did uh, you ask her uh, why she did not get married? Actually, sir, she had mood disorders, obesity, many problems are there, sir. So she, she is did. having so much treatment. So, so she is did. having so much. She oh. is having so much of, uh, uh, so much of. Uh, Uh, so she she is having hypothyroid, obesity, mood disorders, PCOS, and many problems is going on in home. Oh, uh, the, her father also. The, the all these problems were there uh, when she was in mm. her in her early twenties. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She is obese for past ten years. So mood oh. disorders, PCOS, uh, oh, hypothyroid, diabetic, oh, hypertension. Oh. I so I forgot to write type yes, yesterday. Very fast, I made this uh, hypertension also for for five years. Sir. Oh, so she has many problems, uh, and her father also died recently. She appears to be in uh, low mood. That's why I also didn't ask for personal oh. question. Oh, okay, because <laughs> all right. So uh, because see, I was surprised that somebody who is uh, belonging to this family background did not get mm. the correct time. Yes, sir. Usually, mm. and also usually staff nurses are reasonably paid, and then the family yes, also is reasonably all right. The brother is in the IT field, so. Mm. All to all put together, definitely she belongs to a middle income group. Mm. Yes, sir. And she actually mood disorder. She was uh, diagnosed bipolar disorder also. That's why she oh, was on okay. valproate also, sir. Okay. Okay. She has taken okay. so much of treatment. Okay. Shrinivas, uh, further discussion. 
the summary i shall put and then we can discuss the summary okay, okay i'll put the summary as a 35 year female unmarried staff nurse uh, disney on uh, disney on for one year now in my class 3 for past 3 months orthopnea is present uh, pnd absent generalized fatigue and weakness of 6 months pdl edema abdominal distension for 3 months history of uh, uh, post obstructive reactive arthritis hypertension obes- obesity pcos mood disorder osa allergic bronchitis and multiple doctors visit for increasing effort tolerance for the past 3 months and she is on and off of on multiple drug treatments okay okay uh, uh yes uh, uh, shrinivas you discuss now yes, sir uh, could be the possibility of uh, cardiomyopathy sir no no i say i would start with because she gives a history of polyarthritis uh, when she was young and she was put on um, um, penicillin tablet from by uh, by a doctor who examined her at that time so what okay. is that episode like according to you from the description whatever is given to us what do you think would be the type of uh, 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 the uh, what would be what would you think would be the uh, the uh, diagnosis of the polyarthritis diagnosed as uh, uh, put on penicillin uh, prophylaxis so what do you think would be the possibility that could be rheumatic etiology also yeah, sir so, no we, we can think that the, uh, at that age uh, the, uh, the examining doctor thought that it is a, a rheumatic fever and oc initiated on treatment and patient uh, conveniently discontinued the treatment yes sir so the rheumatic fever which man is most frequently affected mitral valve is most mitral affected. valve followed by followed by aortic valve sir aortic valve yeah. and and then tricuspid valve and pulmonary valve involvement is extremely rare Yes, so, uh, in females, what is the usual uh, mitral valve involvement in uh, in rheumatic fever? MS, sir. MS, mitral stenosis. They can have MR also, but mitral stenosis is more frequently met and also more frequently seen in females. Yes, but sir. so if it is a, a mitral stenosis, then a very important symptom that we will expect the patient to have is what is the important symptom of mitral stenosis? E N D. and the paroxysmal obstructive dyspnea that obviously is absent so yes, you are thinking rheumatic fever then and rheumatic valve involvement you have to think how can a patient of mitral stenosis can be without uh, a paroxysmal obstructive dyspnea because of development of right heart failure patient doesn't have pnd i think so sir yeah so if the patient is having a right va- right sided valve involvement especially tricuspid valve involvement uh, the patient is having tricuspid stenosis tricuspid regurgitation along with mitral valve involvement then the patient may not have a uh, symptom of paroxysmal obstructive dyspnea whenever there are multiple lesions involved the proximal lesion will always manifest that is the principle if the patient is having vst and ast what lesion will manifest sir uh, if the patient is having vst and a- atrial septal defect out of these two lesions which will uh, which will manifest is it the vst will manifest more or the asd will manifest more dono sir uh, saroj uh, asd will manifest more yeah but you saw shrinivas that the, the, the basic principle is that if there are multiple lesions the proximal lesion will always manifest yes, the patient sir. is having tricuspid stenosis and mitral stenosis the mitral stenosis symptoms will be actually obliterated or it may become less significant and the patient will have more of tricuspid stenosis related symptoms like right heart failure all those things so yes. the proximal lesion will always manifest so if the patient is having rheumatic heart disease mitral valve involvement and also having a, a tricuspid valve involvement the tricuspid valve related symptoms will dominate over the mitral valve related symptoms so yes, if you are thinking of, of uh, rheumatic fever in this patient i would like also like to think that patient may be having associated tricuspid valve involvement also so that we can explain the uh, the absence of paroxysmal obstructive dyspnea and the patient has got right sided symptoms so that's a one hour one of our diagnosis do you think the, do you think that this can be anything else cardiomyopathy could be sir because of uh, low cardiac output state fatigue and weakness is there yes 
and uh, congestive cardiac failure symptoms are uh, pedal edema and abdominal distension is there sir okay uh, so usually cardiomyopathy affects the left ventricle more frequently or the right ventricle or both Which left ventricle is and left ventricle sir left ventricle mostly mostly myocardial involvement especially myocarditis or post myocarditis uh, cardiomyopathy or uh, 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 many forms of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy they affect mainly the left ventricle but the right ventricle also can be involved but the left ventricle involvement is more prominent they can have paroxysmal atrial dyspnea exertional breathlessness exertional fatigue all those things can be there okay so so that is another possibility is there any any other possibility which is striking your mind one very common at this age one another 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 she is having obesity she has got uh, metabolic uh, metabolic syndromes no a lot of a lot of abnormal disease say uh, all those things are there so what do you think that you should consider uh, something which is mostly affecting the right side of the heart and she uh, and she has gone many doctors also for increasing effort tolerance so she is not able yes. that is her thing yeah because see, if the patient is also having a valvular heart disease then is generating mm. a murmur all the doctors would have immediately picked it up so obviously mm. uh, she is uh, she is not having any loud murmur so can you think of and she pulmonary hypertension and she is yeah yeah mm. i think you should yes. consider pulmonary atrial hypertension you even yes sir yes. primary pulmonary atrial hypertension also should be kept in mind because see, she has got uh, primary pulmonary atrial hypertension sometimes can present as the so not sometimes but the most prominent symptom of uh, uh, significant pulmonary atrial hypertension uh, maybe primary or maybe uh, maybe uh, thromboembolic is uh, exertional breathlessness they will yes. not have paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea but they can have significant mm. exertional dyspnea they uh, yes, uh, breathlessness so, significant reduction in effort tolerance and they can have right heart symptoms also so i think uh, uh, pulmonary atrial hypertension uh, uh, may be primary or may be due to multiple metabolic disorders also should be strongly considered as a possibility okay yes, uh, so, so that's another another possibility any other possibility do you think that is aortic arthritis she has got systemic hypertension yes sir possible it could be sir yeah i think the sage you have to Uh, keep in whenever a woman is coming with hypertension, uh, you must I can always keep in keep a possibility of whether it is uh, uh, aortic arthritis because more common in females. And but from the story, there is nothing uh, to uh, for us to conclude that this could be aortic arthritis because there is no. So, so she was she was able to do bicycling, sir. So that till six months back, she was able to do the bicycling. She was on going on cycle from her hostel to the to the nursing. Yeah. So, no, see, uh, that only see by uh, cycling. Usually, the lower limb is less. Uh, mm. Of course, it can be affected, but less frequently affected. And initial involvement is mostly a subclavian artery on both sides, and okay. upper limbs will be more in a patient with aortic arthritis. So, uh, cycling uh, without any intermittent coordination may not be a point against, but. Uh, There is there are no other points for us to strongly consider as a possibility. So we'll keep this slightly low in the list. We definitely will keep this as a possibility in a 34 year old female, and we will carefully look for all the pulsations to make it certain that we are not missing any aortic arthritis. Okay. So any other th- any other condition? Shrinivas. Ah, uh, sir. Um, rheumatoid uh, rheumatoid problem, sir. Yeah, rheumatoid. What is the cardiac involvement in rheumatoid? Restrictive cardiomyopathy. Uh, uh, con- constrictive cardiomyopathy, sir. Then very late. It can happen. They mm-hmm. when they develop pericardial effusion and pericardial effusion seal, and they can uh, rheumatoid pericardial uh, involvement can uh, sometimes progress to constriction. But uh, when you think of rheumatoid, the involvement is usually well involvement. And what is the valve involvement in rheumatoid? Aortic valve can be affected. You can, they can have aortic regurgitation. The mitral valve can be affected. They can have mitral regurgitation, and uh, they can have pericardial involvement also. Pericarditis can also happen. But usually these lesions are not to start with not very severe. So the patient develops symptoms of uh, over a month she deteriorated and all. 
I would consider rheumatoid a value, heart enrollment will keep quite low in the list. Yes, sir. Any other condition that you would like to bring into bring in and discuss? Gaurav, would you like to uh, suggest any discussion? Any other other than we what we thought? Yes, sir. Do you, uh, do you think uh, that sir, I put disease, uh, see, because always coronary disease should be in our mind, especially she has got lot of uh, associated symptoms. Do you think that this could be uh, uh, coronary disease? No chest pain, sir. No cardiac no. pain, right? Okay. Mm. So, uh, and also 34-year-old menstruating woman, even though she mm. has got other associated symptoms, we will not keep coronary disease as very high in the list. Okay, yes. so... Uh, considering all these uh, differential diagnoses, what uh, can you put a, a, a differential diagnosis in the? Order? I put uh, the slides are there, sir. Slide differential diagnosis put, slide. Yes, yes. Uh, I would put rather than primary, I would put in a pulmonary artery hypertension. Maybe okay. primary, maybe due to the drugs that she is taking and associated, she has got multiple metabolic disorders also. Uh, rheumatic heart disease, yes, definitely that should be considered, but I would I'd like to add associated left side valve involvement. Sorry, right side valve involvement in order to explain the lack of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea as well as the development of right heart symptoms over a short period. I think the order of, I don't think AST I will not consider because she's absolutely okay. asymptomatic. Yep. And, and uh, uh, iota artery is will we are discussed and ruled out, so that's also out. Corona artery disease we are discussed and ruled out. So I think these are the possibilities that you will consider hearing the story. Okay. Uh, Srinivas, anything else you would like to discuss? No, sir. Hmm? You must always think. See, after hearing the story, when you are hearing a story, you should start thinking and then your examination becomes easier because uh, the, you can specifically look for all those things and that will give you the correct diagnosis. diagnosis. Okay. Yes, uh, would you like to uh, raise any additional uh, diagnosis? Okay, I think we will stick to this. And uh, would you like to accept the order which uh, uh, Gaurav has uh, pointed out or would you like to alter the order? Only I would like to, if you draw the order is that whether I should bring up this uh, myocardial fibrosis to slightly higher level. Okay. Oh, the rheumatic heart disease is... Sir, sir, incidence has decreased, sir. That's why I put it down, sir. EMF incidence has decreased. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> sir. The incidence of EMF definitely is coming down in Canada. But I think uh, whenever there is a right-sided involvement, involvement uh, I think EMF can always be a part of the diagnosis. So, uh, I will ask one question, uh, uh, sir, what are the conditions that you will think about when somebody is having a right side involvement? Yes, sir. Somebody is presenting with right heart, right heart symptoms, then you, you should have a, a stock of conditions that you will keep in your mind as a differential diagnosis. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, sir, uh, I will consider uh, Sir, right heart involvement secondary to the left heart involvement either. No, or no, no, no. Sir, I mean, the question is okay. um, only right heart symptoms. So, okay. you have to tell me conditions where you can, you can get in the examination and uh, a patient with right sided right disease only. So, enumerate sir, the conditions. Like congenital heart disease. Epstein right. anomaly. Very good. Epstein anomaly should be always in your mind. Patients with... Uh, 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 patients with the Epstein anomaly may may not get detected in early childhood because the murmur may not be very striking and the patient may continue to lead a normal life and they may become symptomatic in the fourth or fifth decade. Yes, Epstein's anomaly. Two. Then RV cardiomyopathy. Very good. RV endomyocardial fibrosis is a strong possibility, That's uh, right. especially in Kerala because uh, he's from Trichur. So in Kerala, I think you should always think about the possibility of RV endomyocardial fibrosis. Very good. Yes. Sir, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Very good. Any cause pulmonary artery hypertension due to any cause primary pulmonary artery hypertension, thromboembolic. I think that should be kept in mind. Very good. Four. Sir, constrictive pericarditis. Yes, constrictive pericarditis patients present with pure right heart failure. Some of them are present mimicking gastrointestinal symptoms and then when the gastroenterologist examines and finding the JVP is grossly elevated, 
the patient may be referred to the cardiology department very good then different valvular involvement due to the different cause yes. like the carcinoid syndrome causing yes. right heart right right side valve involvement either may be due to rheumatic heart disease itself yes, carcinoid sir. syndrome uh, or uh, infective endocarditis affecting the right side valves all those things should be in your mind when you are yes. thinking of the possibility of mostly yes. right heart disease yes sir So you know, here we have to consider two uh, two important things: primary pulmonary artery hypertension and uh, endomyocardial fibrosis, and also rheumatic heart disease, where the uh, the right side valve valves are also affected. Do you think that we should consider constrictive pericarditis in this patient? Uh, sir, I was thinking, but sir, there is no history of uh, uh, continuous fever. And uh, also there, uh, see, uh, sometimes some viral infection which has caused. Uh, Uh, transient pericardial involvement sometimes later can present with uh, uh, constrictive pericardial so always you need not get a history of long fever diagnosis of tuberculosis taking treatment for tuberculosis pericarditis all these things need not be there yeah. so you can keep your mind open because see, we need we should not miss a diagnosis so we'll keep a bit low in the list a uh, diagnosis of we would like to rule out a possibility of constrictive pericarditis also Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, then, sir, uh, if I am thinking of right-sided, sir, uh, like sir, uh, uh, sir, though uh, not very uh, common, sir, uh, uh, sir, um, uh, sir, tumor. If I can. Uh, This yeah. age. Uh, yeah, you can. You can consider tumor. What tumor are you considering? Sir, RA myxoma. Very good. Uh, 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 are mix so much and we considered because see after all tumors can present with right heart failure so you have to keep your mind open uh, uh, right atrial myxoma or uh, lipoma in the right atrium can present with grossly elevated jugular vein pressure they can have obstructive symptoms they may present with right heart failure i think but the, quite uncommon so keep low in the list don't put it as yes. very high in the list that can also be considered yes ASD also can be considered in most. Yeah, like <laughs> here she is absolutely asymptomatic till the age of thirty, and then suddenly diagnosing a large ASD is very unlikely. And also, mm. most important point is that she became grossly symptomatic over a period of one year. Yes, sir. Yes. That has to be strongly that that the, so you have to think of a condition where that uh, uh, rapid progression of symptoms can be explained. Or, oh, or the patient should develop a complication like infective endocarditis or an, uh, an arrhythmia, which has suddenly precipitated symptoms. But all these conditions, uh, Srinivas, which you think can uh, have fit in with the rapid deterioration of her symptoms, Srinivas? And mostly in last six months, sir. Mostly in last six months. Over yeah. over a year, she has been symptomatic over a year. Yes. So she rapidly deteriorated over a period of six months. Six Almost months. Yes. Almost essential, sir. Yeah. Pulmonary hypertension can be considered. Yeah, I think primary pulmonary hypertension is a strong possibility when you take the point that she has quickly deteriorated, deteriorated over a period of one year. Yes, sir. Uh, Shrinivas, how can there be breathlessness in a patient with right sided heart disease? Primary pulmonary hypertension. How can there be breathlessness? Sir, uh, reduce uh, reduce cardiac output. Uh, so hypoxia it stimulates the respiratory centers. So, so patient develop a dyspnea, sir. Okay. One is one is a, a reduced cardiac output, and uh, that uh, that can result sometimes in respiratory uh, stimulation. And another is when there is a low cardiac output, there can be ischemia to the respiratory muscles, and okay. the respiratory muscles will be felt as dyspnea. Okay, very. Sir, acidosis can also cause sir. Which one? The respiratory acidosis is happen. Oh, that should be very low cardiac output. That's a bit unusual. That is very. Very very severe. Uh, 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 the problem should be very very severe. Even before that, patient can develop uh, breathlessness as an important symptom. What is the uh, one important symptom which is missing in this patient? Syncope. Syncope. Syncope is missing. Functional syncope is not there. Uh, usually, patients with uh, uh, what may be because she is uh, restricting her activity because yes, of dyspnea, so she did not deteriorate to the stage of dialysis. Exertional syncope. There are many multiple mechanisms by which uh, the patient with the right-sided disease can have dyspnea as an important symptom. 
you should always uh, read about it because uh, almost always examiners will definitely ask you what are the what are the mechanisms by means of which a right side heart disease patient can present with dyspnea and symptoms and they will not have they can you and orthopnea but they will not have paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea uh, sarvaj would you like to uh, enumerate the uh, conditions or the so situations which can lead to dyspnea as an important symptom in a patient with right sided heart disease yes sir mm-hmm. uh, sir uh, if right sided heart disease sir patient has got a, may have a ascites as a result sir patient can have a dyspnea but uh, no uh, the, sir orth- up to orthopnea but may not have pnd okay. so sometimes the pulmonary artery may be dilated and it mm. is uh, get, uh, compressing to the Mm. LMC. Mm-hmm. And LMC. Uh, you can compress LMC. You can compress the bronchus because the pulmonary artery goes with the bronchus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unless there is a coronary anomaly. If there is a coronary anomaly, yes. If, uh, there, if there is no coronary anomaly, the dilated and the hypertensive pulmonary artery branches can compress upon the bronchus and can uh, narrow the bronchus and the patient can develop breathlessness. Okay, right, yes. And sir, in the beginning, uh, doctor told about that decreased cardiac output, and then the patient may get the uh, breathlessness because of the uh, low output uh, and uh, sir fatigue to the respiratory muscles. Very good. Yes. And sir, then sir, uh, uh, respiratory centers uh, are stimulated because of uh, if hypoxia has developed. Sir. Mm, okay. hypoxic hypoxia can stimulate the respiratory center okay uh, gavira would you like to t- take for, from this point and mention three or four conditions where they can or the two. one is sir hypoxic uh, cardiomyopathy is also defined sir hypoxic cardiomyopathy okay uh, uh, that of course is usually described in uh, in uh, copd patients with copd when they develop right side heart failure they can also develop ischemia to the to the uh, lv and that can also progressively deteriorate the functioning of the lv and they can have a picture similar to the uh, uh, cardiomyopathy involving the left ventricle but what are the other situations where a patient can have dyspnea as a symptom due to uh, right sided disease uh, what is the turgor effect uh, gaurav what is turgor effect oh. Saroj, would you like to try it? Gargar effect? Sir, I have forgotten, sir. You have to go. Srinivas? Sir, due to the ischemia of the coronary sinus, that lead to the edema of endocardium. That lead to the coronary. Very good. When there is a, when there is a right heart failure, the RA pressure can go up and the coronary sinus drains into the right atrium and that will result in elevation of the coronary sinus pressure. and uh, that will in sequentially it can lead to edema of the myocardium and uh, that disturbs the disturbs the myocardial performance especially relaxation and the left ventricular and diastolic pressure can go up the patient can have dyspnea as an important symptom okay right anything else the sir in uh, one of the series they have uh, mentioned that if pulmonary artery di- dimension is more than 4.5 sir then uh, sir it, it it can compress the lmc also sir they have uh, Uh, in articles they have put forward sir so that maybe. can also lead on yeah, maybe if, if somebody has found it yes maybe if you uh, so you can put that also that then when a hugely dilated um uh, main more than 4.5 uh, centimeters then it can yes sir that because pa is anterior to aorta so it can compress the lmc origin and causing ischemia sir that and they have <laughs> even uh, and they they they, they have even put chance uh, to in lmc to relieve that dyspnea sir yes few case reports are there sir okay usually see left main is quite posterior and the one, the one which comes anterior is the the left atrial descending artery and the, the, the relationship of the pulmonary artery to the aorta is uh, to the to the anteriorly and to the left uh, but if there is a coronary anomaly like uh, if the if the coronary artery is uh, left main is arising from the right sinus then this uh, especially uh, and is crossing uh, between the pulmonary artery and the aorta and the pulmonary artery is dilated then the left main can be significantly compressed so that is what i said if there is an anomalous origin of the coronary artery and the pulmonary artery is pulmonary artery hypertension pulmonary artery is dilated that can be significantly compressed 
but if you have read that that then somebody has reported yes, that sir. In the and they put the stents also, sir. They put the stents also to relieve their dyspnea, sir. That's why they put they put report here. Mm. A bit unusual that uh, left main can be uh, significantly compressed because left main is far posterior compared to because the, the sinus anterior sinus and then the lateral uh, left sinus and from the left sinus only the left coronary artery is rising. So uh, there is a possibility. Okay. Then uh, the bronchus can be compressed, and also another is reverse bronchus. Sir, reverse bronchus effect. Yes, reverse bronchus yeah. effect, which uh, can en encroach upon the cavity of the left ventricle, and it can impair the dilatation of the left ventricle, and diastolic function can be compromised. Yes, and also heart disease syncytium, and sometimes when the uh, left uh, right ventricle gets hypertrophied, it can have effects on the uh, right left ventricle also. And then also you can mention there are certain receptors in the lung which are known as uh, J receptors, which can get stimulated by the dilated pulmonary artery or stretched pulmonary artery, and that can also give the symptom of breathlessness in the in a patient. So there are many multiple mechanisms by which the symptom of uh, breathlessness can be uh, precipitated in a patient with right heart involvement. But the most important point is that the patient can never have sinus. PND. PND. No PND at all. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Our yes. patient also sir, no, no PND, sir, only orthopnia, sir. Oh, yes, sir. That, is why, that is why we are considering primary pulmonary artery hypertension yes, as the first possibility. Yes. And then, if you are to explain the rheumatic heart disease, then we have to think associated right heart involvement and also dilated endomyocardial fibrosis is something which can definitely be discussed as the patient can have dominant uh, right uh, right sided endomyocardial fibrosis. Okay, now coming to the physical findings and then uh, you yes. can yeah. Sir, on examination, patient conscious, cooperative and uh, comfortable at rest and sitting. No no cyanosis, clubbing, uh, ictus or lymphadenopathy. Sir, height is 157 centimeter, weight 95.4. BMI comes around 39, sir. Oh, geez, uh, Acanthosis. Mm. Yes, sir, yes, a model. Acanthosis migraines is present. Palatal pitting, pedal edema are present up to the shins are grade 2. Abdominal distension and facial puffiness is present. Uh, vitals are temperature 98.3 Fahrenheit, pulse 80 per minute, regular low volume, felt in all peripheral vessels, no radio, radio femoral delay. BP 110 by 70 in right upper limb, left upper limbs are 100 by 70, right lower limb 110 millimeter systolic. Uh, respiratory rates are uh, 20, uh, 22 so, per minute, so require abdominal, no S3 muscles. One minute, one minute. The things that we have discussed, which is good. PAT, okay. PAT, and a pill. And Srinivas, by looking at the. Is it real, sir? I'm in only, sir. Somebody is. Somebody is talking. Dr. Dheeraj, can you please. Dr. Dheeraj, can you please switch off. Support your system. You mute your. You mute your system so that it does not disturb the discussion. Dr. Dheeraj. Dr. Dheeraj, can. Imanshu, uh, can you uh, mute Dr. Dheeraj? Yeah, I have done. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay uh, Srinivas, uh, uh, from the so far, what are the conditions that uh, that we can exclude? Uh, regurg <coughs> regurgitation lesions. No, 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 we cannot, we need not go for all the, no, no, uh, uh, with all the conditions that we have already discussed, uh, do you think that some of these can be uh, ruled out? Uh, Iota arteritis could be yeah, ruled out. Iota arteritis can be yeah. ruled out because the pressure is only 100 bar 70 and all the four limbs are having the same pressure. Yes, sir. So, uh, usually, uh, sometimes these patients can have normal pressure in the both upper limbs, but then the lower limb will, will, will elevate the pressure. Okay, so that, that is definitely ruled out. Uh, any other thing that you, you think that you can rule out? Okay, anyway, we'll go ahead. Right, right. Uh, yes, sir. Ahead. Sir, uh, sir, SpO2 is 94% at room air in all four limbs, while it desaturates to 88 to 90% on walking about 200 meters, sir. Oh. Our six minute walk test is not coming. Six minute walk test was around 188 meters only, sir. Oh, oh okay. Uh, shall I go on JVP or we shall? Yeah. yeah, we'll go to JVP and then we'll discuss. Uh, sir, JVP is raised about 13 centimeters from the clavicle sitting position, sir. It comes about uh, 13 into 0. 0.75. Oh, 
11 mm hg sir is the mean rf pressure so prominent a wave and y descent prominent a wave and y descent yes sir the x i was not able to make out sir that oh so you uh, then uh, uh, a wave is prominent say when there is a y descent what what wave you do you think that you expect it to become more prominent cv v wave so v wave is, so when you are saying that a wave is prominent and then you are saying y descent also is prominent you have to be very careful yes sir yes. because the a wave is followed by x descent and sometimes they, they, if the patient is having significant tricuspid regurgitation they can have prominent cv wave that is possible but uh, cv wave what is uh, uh, what what is the mechanism of a wave gaurav what is uh, what 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 is the uh, 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 the the event in nervous system which, which induces the a wave right atrial contractions atrial contraction okay atrial in text septum sir oh. mm. okay uh no, no a wave will be there but if you want to say prominent a wave obviously there may be septum should not be septum should be uh, uh, septum should be intact if the patient is having a wave will be definitely there and is due to atrial contraction okay uh, what is the what is the reason for x descent mechanisms of all the things in the jvp rv system rv system x descent is due to gaurav yes sir yes sir x descent is due to uh, rv systole sir rv eh? x descent is due to what annular uh, little relaxation sir little relaxation sir next is c wave what is c wave due to c wave is the impression of the carotid sir on the yes people think that it may be due to impression of the carotid but and there is an explanation in the heart itself what is explanation say in the heart tricuspid valve closure tricuspid valve closure not enough is a little more so during isovolumetric contraction period the tricuspid valve bulges into ra yes the uh, during isovolumetric contraction the mitral valve or uh, uh, tricuspid valve closes and the, the leaflets bulge into the right atrium and that will give rise to the c wave and what is the mechanism of x dash gaurav atrial uh, 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 right ventricular systoles ha huh. so what rv systole no no that is not enough you have to explain it okay uh, during the sir systole uh, due to the contraction of the ventricle the tricuspid valve is pulled uh, oh, as a result oh. there will be x descent sir you have to say a little more a little more explanation as the lv as the lv contraction occurs and the blood is pumped into the aorta the lv becomes small the rv becomes smaller and the tricuspid valve is pulled down and that will give rise to the x dash and uh, gaurav what is the most prominent wave in the jvp a wave b wave c wave x dash y y wave, x wave or x descent or y descent which is the most prominent wave the x descent sir. descent is most prominent x descent is the most prominent wave in a normal jugular vein pressure that when you examine jugular vein pressure usually x dash is the x wave is the most x descent is the most prominent x, most prominent yes what is the mechanism of v wave v wave is due to atrial filling sir atrial filling atrial filling filling and uh, have you heard of h wave yes sir sir, sir filling of both right v wave h wave it is the filling of both right atrium and uh, ventricles uh, uh, just before the next if what is h wave in jugular vein pressure during during diastasis this is during diastasis okay diastasis uh, sir uh, can you explain it Uh, sir, usually it is seen when there is a significant bradycardia. Is sir very good? Is there any bradycardia patients? Yes, very very good. Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, after the completion of the uh, sir uh, uh, the y y descent, hmm. sir the uh, uh, there is a uh, accumulation of uh, blood in the RA pressure. So hmm. sir, uh, uh, very uh, slight. Uh, increment in the pressure of the RA mm. due to the 
इंक्रीज ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द डायस्टेसिस सो फॉर यू आर राइट सरोज यस सर यस सर इट्स ऑन द नेम ऑफ सम and usually it occurs in the late part of the diastasis during when the, when the patient is having a after the rapid filling phase when the, the corresponding ventricular pressures have gone up what will happen to corresponding atrial ventricular valve when the when the ventricle is rapidly filled and there is a rapid rise in the pressure in the ventricle during early part of diastole what will happen to the corresponding atrial ventricular valve It may open the diastolic PR, sir. Yeah, it will float back and almost yes, end to the closer position. May not close, but yes. come very close to the closer position. At that time, what is happening? The atrium is relaxed and the blood is flowing into the corresponding atrium from the corresponding veins. Inferior and superior vein are drains into right atrium, and the pulmonary veins drain into the corresponding left atrium. And when they drain into corresponding atrium. the uh, as uh, uh, saroj has rightly pointed out the pressure in the atrium slightly increases and that makes the valve to open again and the uh, blood flows again into the corresponding ventricle that will give rise to a small smooth uh, uh, positive wave which is known as the h wave this occurs in patients who have got uh, uh, significant bradycardia and it occurs in the second half of the diastasis and uh, uh, this has got no special significance it can be a question which can be asked to the candidates whether have you heard of hwa or not so some of the examiners when you are answering all questions the examiners have to ask a question which you are not able to answer and so that will so that is the time when they will ask about hwa if they have asked about hwa that obviously means that the rest of the things you have done extremely well so hwa is a wave which is seen as a positive wave which is seen in the jugular vein in the right uh, atrial tracing especially in patients with bradycardia and it is in the second half of the diastasis and is secondary to the atrial filling and further opening of the atrial ventricular valve during the late half late part of the uh, diastasis and it's a very very smooth positive wave okay so uh, h wave you cannot see in by bedside examination but the examiner can ask you about the h wave and what is it okay right so uh you give us pressure column uh, we have to keep the uh, your description that the a wave is prominent and there is a prominent white descent right descent that we have to how do you make out a wave and b wave in the carotid and the jugular position so by feeling the by time timing the cycle sir by timing the cycle sir time in the cycle you will time with, time with s1 sir S one okay. You can time it with S one, or you can time it with the carotid pulse. Carotid pulse, yes. Uh, when you time it with carotid pulse, how do you make out between A and V wave? Uh, sir, uh, just before the carotid is A, sir. Just okay. before the carotid is A, A. A. and A. Uh, V V wave. Sir, after the after the after the. Just with the S two, if it comes with the S two, is the V wave circuit. No, the the, the top portion of the V wave will correspond to S two, but uh, it is after the carotid pulse. The one the, the pulse, yes. the wave which occurs before the carotid is the uh, A wave, yes. and the one which occurs after the uh, uh, carotid is the V wave. Uh, uh, sorry, why why descent? Sorry, V V wave. Uh, can you tell me a uh, few conditions where V wave can be very prominent? Sir, TR, tricuspid triggers, 
TR sir, tracker speed vehicle station sir. Yes sir, yes. What else? Sir, in uh, uh, failure, right heart failure. Uh, there the uh, JEP will be elevated, but uh, I am asking a question. Conditions where V wave is very prominent. There are five conditions. You have to mention all. Yes, sir, TR ASD, sir. TR ASD. ASD. No, no, ASD, sir. In that uh, TAP VC, sir. TAP. Anomalous pulmonary venous connection leading on to increase in the. Anomalous uh, pulmonary venous connection will not give rise to prominent V wave. Garbody defect. Garbody defect, very good. Uh, sir, some, sir, any cause of uh, uh, pulmonary Increasing blood tension with TR, like sir, in case of core pulmonary also we can get. Ah, yes, yes, no, no, that we have already mentioned. TR can give us to prominent BVM. There are multiple reasons for TR. That is over. So we are saying about TR. So now you are saying about Garbody defect where there is an LV to RS shunt. Yes, what else? Sir, Ostium Primum ASD. Okay, Ostium primary ASD or Ostium secondary yes. ASD with mitral regurgitation. Yes, ASD with mitral regurgitation. Okay, fourth. So, in case of uh, uh, complete heart block, can we get? Complete heart block, what will be? Uh, now I have to ask a question. In complete heart block. Giant AVY. Giant AVY. You can get irregular cannon waves. Yes. Cannon waves. You cannot use the word giant A waves because yeah. the difference between giant A wave and the cannon wave. What is the difference? Uh, Gavira, what is the difference between cannon wave and the giant wave? It is three times the. It is three times the. No, giant A wave is a prominent A wave which is seen at the correct time of the A wave. Yes, sir. Cannon wave is occurring when. Uh, what is uh, when is the cannon wave occurring? As the right atrium contracts against the closed wall, against the yeah. closed tricuspid wall. Right yeah. atrium contracts over a closed atrium carvile, especially in the atrial contracts of this during the stroke. Yeah. You have to mention two more conditions another is ruptured sinusable cell line to the right atrium. Yes, sir. Oh. Coronary cameral fistula into the right atrium. So any lesion causing an increase in RA pressure, sir, that will lead on to. No, 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 no. Increase in, 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 in RF filling. Increase in RF filling. Yeah, in in RF filling. See, there is oh, a yes. high pressure RF filling. For example, in a patient oh. with uh, uh, ASD or in a patient with, uh, uh, for example, in a patient with uh, de roofed coronary sinus, there can be more blood coming to the right atrium. That will not elevate the jugular insufficiency. That will not produce a V wave. B wave can occur only when there is a high pressure jet should come to the right, uh, right atrium during the stroke. So that is why tricuspid yes, mitral regurgitation with ASD, or it can be garbage shunt, or it can be a ruptured sinus of Elselva, or it can be a coronary cameral fistula, where an arterial blade is coming to the right atrium. Okay. 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 Sir, inspection? Oh. Inspection palpation, sir. No, 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 no. We cannot go away from JVP. So, you yes, said sir, yes, sir. prominent A wave. So, well, let us look at the prominent. What are the conditions which can give us to prominent A wave? Gavira? Yes, sir. First is, sir, uh, TS. TS. Tricuspid stenosis. So, tricuspid stenosis. Can this patient have uh, tricuspid stenosis? Sir, history of rheumatic is there, sir. No, 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 no. No, because prominent wide descent. Very good. The patient has no. got a prominent wide descent, so cannot have tricuspid stenosis. Why, why, yes, sir. why did she say that there cannot be tricuspid stenosis in the sense of prominent wide descent? Uh, go ahead. Uh, because filling cannot be uh, there, sir. Good yeah. filling cannot be there, sir. If there so, TS is there, so then a wide descent cannot occur. So, good filling cannot be there. there cannot be, wide descent will be there, but it will be a slow wide descent. Oh, slow slow wide descent. Yes. Not a rapid wide descent. So, you said the wide descent is very prominent. So, uh, that is very unlikely. Okay. So, what are the conditions in which you can get prominent air waves? Tricuspid stenosis? Uh, then, tricuspid uh, atresia. And tricuspid atresia. How you have to make keep a or, 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 or patients of trichos can there be uh, no A wave in a patient with tricuspid atresia? Atrial fibrillation is present, sir. If there's atrial fibrillation, but atrial fibrillation is present. If ASD present, if they are very large ASD, 
then there, there may not be any prominent A wave. When there is a large AST in a patient is, uh, with uh, tricuspid atresia, uh, well, well, the, the right atrial pressure will be controlled by which pressure? Gaurav? Left ventricular and diastolic. Left ventricular and diastolic pressure. And diastolic pressure. So if the left ventricular pressure is normal, then A wave need not be prominent. Okay, right, yes. But if there is a restrictive ASD, then you will get a prominent A wave. Okay, right. Other conditions, A wave prominence? Pulmonary the pulmonary hypertension, sir. Pulmonary hypertension. Okay, pulmonary hypertension can have, uh, severe pulmonary hypertension can have, with a uh, right ventricular hypertrophy, can have prominent A waves, yes. Right pulmonary stenosis. Pulmonary stenosis, very good, yes. And burnheim effect can also. Uh, yes, sometimes burnheim effect can give rise to prominent A waves in the neck. Not very prominent, but you can see flickering areas in the neck, especially sometimes in patients with uh, anterior myocardial infarction, you may be able to see a uh, airway in the neck because of the burn aim effect. Yes, very good. TCF patients can... Hmm? Sometimes patients with uh, RV infarction can have sometimes yes. have prominent airway because... Uh, RV failure. It uh, interferes with the RV uh, relaxation and then the atrium has to contract powerfully to empty its contents into the right ventricle. So sometimes you may see prominent airways in a patient with RV infarction also. Okay, right, yes. So these are the conditions which you get there. Then why coming to wide descent, uh, tell me conditions where there can be prominent wide descent. So uh, one is our uh, right ventricular uh, TR, TR can lead also. TR, yeah. TR any, can patient with, any patient with TR and competent tricuspid valve can have a prominent wide descent. Why? Constructive pericarditis. No, no, before that, in tricuspid regurgitation, why wide descent is prominent? So, because of increased filling is coming back, sir, that coming back to the. No, no, that's because in, uh, in a patient with tricuspid regurgitation, V wave is very tall. And when the tricuspid valve opens, because of the high pressure in the right atrium, uh, emptying into the right ventricle is very rapid during the early part, and that can give rise to a very prominent white descent, especially in patients with uh, uh, prominent uh, tricuspid regurgitation. And if the tricuspid valve is normal, uh, they are opening normally, these patients can have prominent white descent. Another condition? The right heart. Uh Right heart, uh, are we cardiomyopathy? Constrictive pericarditis, sir. Constrictive Very pericarditis. Very good. Constrictive voiding. It took so much time for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> Constrictive pericarditis, yes. Can you tell me one condition where white descent is absent? Yes, uh, sir. Tamponade. Tamponade. Cardiac, cardiac tamponade. In cardiac tamponade, white descent is absent. Well, in cardiac tamponade, which, be, which way becomes prominent? X. X. X descent becomes X prominent. X descent. Okay. Okay, so but this uh, physical finding actually needs to be verified <laughs> because it's very odd finding that you are pro uh, projecting prominent A wave and uh, wide descent. Okay, right, go ahead. Other findings? Any other point anybody would like to raise and discuss? Saroj, would you like to raise any point? No, sir. No. Okay, right, go ahead then. Uh, other findings, uh, Gaurav? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, coming on to inspection and palpation combines a chest wall symmetrical, trachea central, uh, no kyphoscoliosis, a pex pit in the left fifth intercostal space, three centimeter lateral to the mid clavicle line, sir. Associated to medial uh, retraction, sir, I, it was most probably RV type, sir. And there's palpable P2 in the left second inter intercostal space, parasternal heave and epigastric pulsations could not be made out due to obesity and abdominal distension, sir. Oh, so then when in the absence of parasternal pulsations and uh, epigastric pulsations, yes, uh, it is uh, very risky for you to say that yes, sir. there is an RV type of apex. Why did you say Yes, sir. What? You should the say medial that. Uh, but uh, it's not enough. I would, I would. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think by saying that uh, the, the, the character, whether it is RV or LV, I am not able to definitely say because there are no parasternal pulsations. See, and yes, that's why I kept in the brackets, sir. I have not. Uh, <laughs> I think you should be diplomatic in that one, saying that apex pit is well where it is diffuse, but the uh, parasternal pulsations are not uh, easily palpated. So I am not able to definitely say whether it is an RV or LV type. 
uh, you, have to, you have to be little diplomatic there. Otherwise, uh, you may be making a wrong statement. Okay. Okay, right, yes. And of course, you know, the palpable teacher and all will tell you that this patient may be having some degree of hypertension and most likely RV may be dilated and RV may be... Yes, sir. But then, unless you get a physical finding, you can bring in that diagnosis. Okay, right, yes. Okay, right, yes, go ahead. Um, percussion, sir, left heart border uh, corresponds to... Any, any, any thrill, any, anything else? No. No, no so actually obesity and uh, distension was there, so not no thrill, no, nothing can be. Okay. Only, only I was able to, only palpable P2 only, nothing else. Okay. Yeah. okay, right, yes. The percussion, sir, left heart border corresponds to apex, right heart border, substernal, second left intercostal space is dull, sir. Okay. Uh, auscultation shall I start, sir, or? Yeah, 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 yeah you can. So yes. let me discuss. Yes, sir. S, uh, S1 is soft, sir. Yeah. S2 is wide and fixed is split with a loud P2. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And, sir, uh, there is an ejection click in the second uh, left intercostal space, sir. There was no variation with the respiration, sir. Mm -hmm. RVS3 was present, no, no, S, no S4, no oh. RVS4, no. Oh. Okay. Srinivas? Yeah, any marmots we had here, Sir, sir uh, now mur murmur is there, sir. Shall I complete murmur also on this? Uh, you we, we, we will discuss this point up to here. Senior yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, this is just a heart sounds. Murmur is not yet completed. No, no, yes. no, heart sounds. Discuss the heart sounds. Sir, uh, loud, P, uh, loud P2 is there, sir. Okay. Uh, no, no, you have to make a comment. Just what can fix a split explanation and what do you expect in order? It is split. Uh, that could be, could be ASD, sir. Why did you go to ASD? We are not considering ASD. See, you have to think, yes. no, don't jump to conclusions without thinking. See, the question is asked where C is going to allow this to wide and fix a split. So, uh, S1 okay. is also soft. S1 is also soft. S1 is soft. What do you think is the possible? Sir, RV failure. RV failure. See, I think. I think that as the RV failure has a one strong possibility, she has got And RVS3 I have made positive. RVS3 is there. Yeah, RVS3 is there. And also patients when they develop RV dilatation, these patients can have right bundle branch block also. Okay. Why, why uh, sir, they can have right bundle branch block? Uh, sir, uh, time taken for the uh, depolarization will be more if the RV is dilated. On top of that, they, when, they, when, when the RV... Uh, Dilates, there is always a risk that these patients can go for right bundle branch block. That is because, uh, what is how does the right right bundle travel in the heart? Yeah, sir, uh, uh, right bundle is longer than the left bundle. Okay. And, uh, sir, it has got a, 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 it also crosses through the septum also, sir. IVS. Crosses through the septum. Where sir, does it? It is in the, the septum only. Yeah, in the septum. I don't know, sir. Gaurav, how does the... Yes, uh, sir. Uh, how does the uh, right bundle uh, travel? It uh, travels through a bundle. It travels through a... Uh, 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 it travels through a moderator band. It travels through the moderator... Yes. Moderator band, yes, sir. Yes. It travels through the moderator band and reaches the root of the papillary muscle on the of the right ventricle and when the right ventricle dilates the moderated band gets stretched and sometimes these patients can develop right bundle branch block also so that possibility also can be kept in your mind that this patient may be having what you think of the second heart zone may be due to uh, uh, severe right heart failure because JEP is elevated all the features of severe right heart failure RVS3 is, RVS3 is also there all those things are there and also uh, a possibility of associated right bundle branch block also should be kept in mind. Ejection clicks. Yes, yes. Cardiomegaly is also there, sir. Cardiomegaly yeah, cardio also has significant cardiac enlargement. All there are plenty of points for us to think of severe right heart failure. Srinivas, ejection click. Explain. Uh, pulmonary ejection clicks. Uh, mm. uh, think, Why did uh, you say it's a pulmonary click? I am saying it's aortic click. It is in the second intercostal space, sir. Left yes, second, second left. It is well heard in the left, uh, second left intercostal space. 
then he has not mentioned about actually he should have mentioned that whether it is audible in the right in the cross space or so because uh, the aortic click can be heard in both on the right side as well as on the left side and pulmonary clicks are mostly audible only on the left side not on the right side okay so yes, uh, 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 no no variation usually the uh, the uh, the pulmonary clicks may be basic and why this click is not basic shrinivas yes. Sir, sir, why this click? Why this click is not facing? Sir, it is vascular possibly, not a valvular. Hmm. Yeah, it is a, it is a only. Yes. Uh, due to PA dilatation, it is due to PA. It is due to permanent artery hypertension, PA dilatation. The click can be constant. Dilatation is severe. Permanent stenosis, doming of the valve, giving rise to uh, click. The uh, click can be facing, where it is better audible during expiration. And can be absent and not or not audible during inspiration. Okay, right. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, this patient is not having any fourth heart, so okay, right. Yes. Yes. Okay, right. Yes. Coming on. Coming on to murmurs now, sir. Hmm. A short ejection systolic murmur of grade uh, three by six in left third intercostal space heard with the diaphragm of stethoscope uh, with breath held in uh, inspiration, sir. Mm. And uh, and a high pitch blowing decrescendo early diastolic murmur beginning with P2 was mm. best heard in the left second intercostal space with the bell of the stethoscope and there was no effect of respiration or intensity of this murmur. Okay. Only these these two murmurs. Oh, okay. A short uh, ejection systolic and one uh, uh, one early diastolic and one early diastolic one. Okay, um, 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 Gaurav, you discuss these two murmurs. What do you think? Yes, the first. First one is due to the ejection of the blood in the sir pulmonary artery, so that is due to the short, short murmur service. How can there be um, uh, ejection systolic murmur uh, in this situation when the blood is ejected in the pulmonary artery? You can so. It is due to. The ejection systolic murmur can be because of three reasons. Either that the the flow is getting obstructed because of uh, like valve, so there may be an increased flow, and the third sir, there may be a dilatation of the vessel itself. Yes, actually there are about uh, the seven situations where there can be an ejection systolic murmur. Gaurav, would you like to attempt it? Sir. Eh? Uh, is it, there can be an ejection. Ejection systolic murmur is the commonest murmur that is audible over the bricardia. There are multiple mechanisms where you can get an ejection systolic murmur. Saroj, will you try? There are seven mechanisms for production of the ejection systolic murmur. Yes, sir. I will try, sir. First, okay. sir, uh, if flow is more, then, sir. Uh, no, no, you should put it scientifically. No, no, no. That's not enough. Uh, oh, flow is more is correct. But you have to put it scientifically. Yeah, sir, uh, the condition where we get. Ah. Oh. The mechanism, 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 and then condition. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, like in case of uh, sir, valvular stenosis, like pulmonary stenosis, sir. Hmm. Uh, sir, dilatation of the pulmonary artery. No, like no, 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 that, uh, uh -huh. no, no. That's not the way to describe. I'll tell you how to describe. No, uh, stenosis valve, normal flow. Uh, yes, uh, example, pulmonary stenosis, aortic stenosis. Here, the valve is uh, stenosis. There is a normal flow. That can give rise to an ejection systolic murmur, ASPS. Okay, right. Similarly, uh, sir, uh, like uh, flow is more, uh, uh, more there normal is no obstruction ah. and dilatation of the vessel. Like uh, second, uh, no, no, no. You should do step by step. Second mechanism: normal well, no obstruction, no uh, structurally normal well, and increased flow. Example. Pulmonary, uh, sir, idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension. No, 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 wrong. No, no, no. The PR? Oh, PR can sometimes give rise to okay, right, yes. More than more, the uh, best uh, two examples are ASD and yes. ASD and sir, uh, TAPVC? No, all, sir, all right. PTP, TAPVC can oh, give rise to, but one condition, one you should mention on the left side, one on the right side. Sir, left on side. the left side, sir, uh, uh, sir any AV uh, communication or sir, hyperthyroidism, anemia? No, 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 they are not increased flow. Oh. 
AR can lead out to increased flow in normal opening of the valve but increased flow third mechanism you have already mentioned the the dilated vessel Yes. What is the mechanism in dilated vessel? Uh, you tell the mechanism also. Yes, sir. Uh, because of the sir, increased turbulence. Yes. Uh, when the blood is ejected from through the through the valve into a dilated vessel, it produces a turbulence in the dilated vessel that can give rise to a ejection systolic murmur. Conditions. Conditions. Yes. Post dilatation, sir. Post no, 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 no. Post dilatation is pulmonary stenosis. No. Oh. The pulmonary arterial hypertension. Pulmonary yeah, arterial hypertension with associated dilatation of the pulmonary artery and yes, aortic aneurysm. Uh, aortic aneurysm. Okay. Aortic aneurysm can give rise to uh, uh, an ejection systolic murmur due to the same mechanism. Fourth mechanism. Sir, uh, 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 not incomplete stenosis, like sir, in case of uh, uh, coarctation of aorta, uh, we can get. No, no. What do you mean by incomplete so, stenosis? Sir, uh, sir, the. No, that's no. not correct. No. Fourth mechanism is uh, normal opening, but structurally abnormal valve. For example, bicuspid aortic valve. Yes, even sir. Even they are structurally, uh, they are structurally abnormal. There may not be any obstruction at all, but there can be a murmur. Yes. So the the uh, no obstruction, but structurally abnormal well. That can give rise to mid ejection systolic murmur. Another mechanism. Sir, only just because of the increased dynamic flow. Yes. Example. Physiological in. So like beriberi, anemia, yeah, yeah, yeah. hyperthyroidism. Yeah. Uh, what exactly is happening there? I, I would like you to know, understand what is happening. Uh, there, so a, large, unit. a large volume of blood is ejected in the early part of the stroke. See, in these patients, because of the peripheries are well dilated, as yes. soon as the valve opens out, the the the, the LV will be able to eject the blood very with, without any strain, very easily. And in the early part, there will be a large volume of blood. Most of the ejection takes place quite early in the early part of ejection. And during that time, there is a large volume of blood flowing, and that will give rise to a, a, a ejection systolic murmur. Example, as you rightly said, thyrotoxicosis, anemia, very very all those things. Okay, right. Sixth mechanism. All I have mentioned all now. One is a uh, stenosed valve. Two increased flow. Three structural abnormal valve. Oh no no, we have to mention one more. Another is sclerosed valve. The valve may be normal, otherwise uh, no no obstruction, nothing. But sclerosed valve, aortic sclerosis can give rise to without obstruction. <coughs> so there are about six mechanisms for the production of ejection systolic murmur. For your convenience, I will repeat one. Stenosed valve, two increased flow, three valve opening to a dilated chamber, four uh, structurally abnormal valve, five sclerosed valve, six hyperdynamic circulatory states where there is the blood in the early part of the stone like uh, uh, anemia, thyrotoxicosis, berberry. Because uh, you must be very clear when you are hearing an ejection systolic murmur, you have to explain it. So, so Gavira, will you explain your ejection systolic murmur in this patient? So this is to the third cause, sir. Ball yeah. opening into a dilated chamber. And also, one more. And due to, sir, increased uh, PR can also lead on to increase. Yeah, you're right, you're PR. right. You're right. PR is there, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Because increased flow to a... Because of increased flow. Can be increased flow across the... Uh, across the normal... Yeah, so there are two mechanisms here which has given rise to the uh, systolic ejection systolic murmur. One, because of the PR, there can be a larger stroke volume. And two, the, uh, the pulmonary artery is dilated and the pulmonary valve is opening to the dilated pulmonary artery. So there can be an ejection systolic murmur. There are two mechanisms in this patient which can explain the ejection systolic murmur. Okay.
So um, you carefully look for the the uh, the uh, tricuspid regurgitation murmur. No, so actually diastolic murmur was uh, tricuspid regurgitation murmur. No, 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 sir. You could not get your ostrom no, no, or part of the uh, or the precordium. Actually, and also patient was obesity was also there as a female patient, so I was only confident of these two murmurs only. Sir. Okay, right. Okay, so there, there is a quite po quite possible that the patient may be having associated tricuspid regurgitation also could most likely. But uh, the, from your description, the patient is not having any V wave. That also is a point uh, for me to, uh, to think. Probably uh, tricuspid regurgitation is not very prominent because you could not yes, get any V wave. Yes. Of the two lesions, tricuspid regurgitation and permanent regurgitation. When the LV is in trouble, the tricuspid regurgitation occurs much earlier than pulmonary regurgitation because the tricuspid valve dilates, and when the tricuspid valve dilates, they develop tricuspid regurgitation. Okay, right. So, uh, sir, is any other point that you want to raise, Srinivas? Okay. So now, uh, Gauru, interpret and then come to your professional diagnosis. Yes, sir. So, obviously, this patient is having severe, sir, severe primary pulmonary arterial hypertension, sir. Why did, uh, you, RV? Why did, you, say, why did you say severe primary pulmonary arterial hypertension? Sir, no other. Uh, she is obese. First, and, uh, obese, uh, yes. So you can think that it could be primary pulmonary arterial hypertension, but you keep your mind open because she is obese. She is having OSA, and so all these things can also lead to development of permanent hypertension. And she is on multiple drugs. Yes, sir. She is having um, um, uh, polycystic uh, ovarian disease. PCOS, OBS, OS, yes. PCOD also is there. So all those things can be kept in your mind. So don't jump to primary permanent hypertension. You can say uh, permanent hypertension. Um, uh, um, Under evaluation. May, uh, maybe secondary to uh, anemia, sorry, not anemia, edema, uh, uh, obesity, or maybe due to OSA, or maybe due to uh, PCOD. All those things should be considered, and I would like to rule out a primary cause for permanent atrial hypertension also. Okay, right, yes? Actually, sir, OSA was mild, sir, in the sleep study report, OSA was mild apnea only. Was oh, I see. Then it is not significant, but you uh, uh, said the patient is having OSA, so. OSA is yes, one for development of pulmonary yes. Okay, right, yes. So, RV failure, sir, she is on treatment with diuretic therapy, sir, from outside. Okay, okay. WHO, sir, functional class 3, sir, 6 minute walk test for only 188 meters with okay, desaturation. Very, very good. Uh, sir, she was diagnosed as PSRA from outside, sir, morbid obesity, OSA, PCOS, mood disorder. What is PSR? I do not know. What is it? What is PSRA? Post-streptococcal post uh, reactive arthritis. Oh, post-streptococcal reactive arthritis. Reactive, reactive arthritis. That, that not, at the moment, she is not having any features. Of, yes, sir. So, uh, probably pro, uh, di di previous diagnosis of post-streptococcal rheumatoid arthritis, uh, reactive arthritis is uh, uh, there. Yes, sir. There is no clue. Okay, right. Yes? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, you are rheumatic. Now, at the moment, there is no evidence of rheumatic. No, yes. Rheumatic yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, Srinivas, what in investigation would you like to look at? Is it ECG, X-ray? What do you think? Which is more informative? X-ray. X-ray. X-ray is more informative. Why do you yes, think X-ray is informative? Gaurav, why X-ray yes, is sir. more informative? So we can uh, see, sir, the to, uh, pulmonary artery segment and this uh, heart shadows. Yes, you can look at the. We can confirm. Shadow. You can look at the size of the pulmonary artery. You can look for sun lesion. Yes. Uh, so all those things can be uh, evaluated much better with X-ray than with ECG. ECG also gives information, but uh, when you are looking at pulmonary artery hypertension and to give you a clue, uh, X-ray is more more important. Okay, right? Yes. X-ray is visible, sir. Oh, ah, yeah, okay. Yes, see him. Yeah, you yeah, we'll discuss. X-ray is okay, sir, now? So this is the first of December X-ray, sir. 
ओके चला डिस्कस और डिस्कस डिस्कस यू डिस्कस एस एच एस टेक्स रे पीए व्यू सर नॉर्मल स्टैंडलाइजेशन सर सेंट्रल सेंट्रलाइजेशन अपीयर्स टू बी नॉर्मल सर ओके कार्डियो मेगालिस दे सर कार्डियो मेगालिस दे सीटी रिस्क अराउंड 60% ओके एंड अपेक्स अपीयर्स टू बी अपटर्नड वी कैन से सर अपटर्नड अपेक्स नो नो आई डोंट एग्री ऑन दैट I don't think apex is upturned. Uh, I will be very neutral in saying that I cannot comment about the apex. If I told I am to comment, I would say that it is more LV type than RV type. Okay. 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 Sir, so cardio megaly is there. Yes. And uh, sir, uh, main pulmonary artery segment is enlarged. Sir, we can main pulmonary artery. Main pulmonary artery segment is enlarged. Yes. And sir, R A enlargement is there, sir, around two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there there is some degree of R A enlargement very good because the vertical height of the R A is uh, more than two and a yes. half. Yes. And sir, cardio megaly secondary to R V H can be there. Yes. Or... Evidence of R V H is there evidence of pulmonary artery hypertension in this X-ray? Yes, the main pulmonary artery is dilated, sir. And sir, this uh, and sir, last uh, this uh, per peripheral one third, sir, there is decreased. Uh, decrease blood blood flow sir but the right pulmonary artery is not right pulmonary artery also enlarged so dilated sir yes sir yes sir also dilated not grossly dilated i would not i am not certain about the from the x ray whether i can easily diagnose pulmonary artery hypertension i agree with you that pulmonary artery segment is large and main pulmonary artery segment is large i agree with that it's a large but uh, when it comes to the peripheral i am not able to see a real peripheral cut off i agree with you that there are no vessels seen in the periphery but yes. even the central vessels are not very huge Maybe because uh, she developed pulmonary artery hypertension over a short period, and uh, maybe that uh, she has not developed significant vascular changes. So pulmonary artery segment is large, but not the rest of the pulmonary arteries. I wouldn't comment on the uh, size of the pulmonary artery. They are not grossly enlarged. MP is definitely enlarged, sir. MP is. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, is there a left atrial enlargement? No sir, angle appears to be normal sir. Angle. Yeah, yeah. That's not upset the large. Okay, so uh, does it help us in our diagnosis? Yes, sir. Cardio megaly is there. Uh, RA enlargement is there. Main pulmonary artery enlargement is there, and peripheral uh, decreased blood flow is uh, we can. Yes. I I will be very neutral about that. I won't make a commitment. Okay, so there are some points for us to think that the patient is having some degree of pulmonary artery hypertension. So probably ECG may help us. ECG. Oh sir, one more sir. This is the X-ray just six months back, sir. Oh, March. You can see the date, sir. March twenty-one. Uh, oh, the, the, just six the, months the, the, the one from medical taken. college. Um, which medical you, college. Which you showed was the X-ray which is taken now. Yes, sir. First December. Yes, sir. This oh, is the December. So there is a pulmonary artery segment has definitely become much bigger. There is no doubt about this it. This is the first December, sir. This one and this yeah. one is the eighth of March, sir. Yeah, yeah. Then In six the, months. Uh, six months she has. She has. Yes. Six months she has deteriorated so much. Yeah. So pulmonary artery segment has become large. Uh, heart has become. Cardio megaly has come. Yes. 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 Uh, I think uh, I agree with you that uh, over a period of six months she has uh, her cardiac status has definitely come down. Okay. Right. Yes. Sir, six months back also, sir. RPA is uh, descending. Right descending pulmonary artery is enlarged, sir. We cannot. I won't say Kerala. I think it is normal. Yes, sir. And we we can see peripheral blood blood vessels. We can see, sir, here in this X-ray. In this X-ray, all the vessels are seen to the periphery. But I agree yes, with sir. you. In the other X-ray, periphery sir vessels are not very clearly seen. Here we can we see, yes, sir. Yes. But pulmonary or main pulmonary artery segment is definitely large in the second this X-ray. No doubt about it. Yes, sir. In first December it is enlarged, sir. This yes. one it is plus. Here also, right was uh, sorry, left was somewhat the enlargement. We can see yeah, yeah, there, is a, there is a slight prominence of the main pulmonary artery, but uh, definitely it has grown uh, over a period of six months. No doubt about it. Okay. Yes, sir. First time I am seeing sir so much deterioration in six months on uh, even on X-ray. Sir, otherwise I was. <laughs> There are some some of the patients, especially primary pulmonary artery hypertension patients, they can very quickly deteriorate over a period of six months to one year. Okay. Now, yes, luckily she had the X-ray also, sir. Both the. Okay. Now coming to the ECG. I have only just ECG, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Interpret the ECG. ECG is a normal centralization and and uh, sir, normal calibration, sir. 
Oh. So coming on to the P waves are positive in lead one, two, three, and A waves are negative in A V as such. So sinus rhythm. And the PR interval is normal, sir. Okay. Sir, axis is is around uh, plus one twenty, sir. A A V R is equal physics, sir. So right axis, sir. A V R equal physics. Axis is around one twenty plus one point twenty. Right axis deviation. Okay. And uh, sir, if if you come on to the sir uh, chest lead, sir. Uh, no, no, no. You have to make a comment about the uh, uh, right atrium, whether it is enlarged or not. Then lead to sir, it is uh, around 2.5. So right atrium is appears to be. I am not able to because the, the lines yes, are not very clear. Is it 2.5? Yes, sir. If it is 2.5, then you are. There is a right atrial enlargement. I think it is borderline only. Borderline only is the border. Oh, okay. If you want to make it borderline, all right. Okay, yes. What are the? Is there other features of R V H? Yes, sir. This uh, we can see, sir, in uh, V two, V three, and V four, sir. Uh, there is a ST depression. ST depression is there, sir. Okay, very good. Depression with. So that may indicate there is a uh, R V H with a uh, strain pattern. Yes. Strain pattern is till V five. We can see that till V five. I think that uh, leads we for L V. We are not getting that uh, cardio megaly. So we are mostly we have get the right sided only. Sir. That okay. Can be a, But uh, looking at the uh, ECG, I would have expected her to have more prominent R waves in V1, uh, which I am not able to see in this patient. Sir, obesity, obesity is there. So obesity, abdominal distension. Okay. So maybe that oh. some of the uh, electrical activity is not being well conducted to the leads, and we are not able to record the whole electrical activity. Uh, what are the types of right ventricular hypertrophy in electrocardiogram, Gaurav? What are the types? You can see R V. Hmm. So uh, what? What are the types of right uh, electrocardiographic evidence of right one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First is that the uh, R S ratio, sir, in V one V two will be more R than S, sir. V one and V two, sir. Hmm. Okay. Uh, v one V one V two. There can be either Q R pattern or a pure. <laughs> R pattern or a deep large R with small S pattern, which is usually associated with uh, pulmonary R with associated with pressure overload of the right ventricle, and can happen in patients with pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary atrial hypertension, uh, all those things. Okay, right? Yes. And sir, other and uh, other we can say then V5 is it S wave will be more prominent than the R wave, sir. V5 is it? In in V5 in V5 V6 if R by S ratio is less than. Less than one. Less than one. Okay, right. Yes. One. Then. Yeah. Uh, there will be sir uh, monophasic R in V1. No, no, that is we already mentioned. R is R dash pattern. Yes. R R R is R dash pattern will tell you about uh, right ventricular hypertrophy associated with volume overload. Volume overload. Yes. So this is pressure. Uh, the first one is pressure where there is pure R or Q R pattern. And uh, all these three conditions will have uh, uh, right axis deviation. In the limb leads, you will see right axis deviation, and in the uh, in the chest leads, there can be three three types of patterns. One, uh, uh, tall R with a very uh, small uh, small S wave, or a Q R pattern in V1, which is mostly associated with pressure overload. Two, R S R dash pattern, uh, which is associated with volume overload. And three, R by S ratio. The prominent S wave in V5 and V6, and R by S ratio in V5 and V6 is less than one. There are also are features suggestive of right ventricular hypertrophy. And what is the situation where you get uh, right axis deviation and R by S ratio less than one classically? Give it up. Yes, sir. Right axis with. Uh... In what condition do you get right axis deviation with R by S ratio less than one? In V5 and V6. Top. Yes, sir. Left anterior fascicular block. Sir, take a pardon. Right axis deviation. Left anterior fascicular block. Sir. No, 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 no. The question is not uh, uh, not about the axis deviation. 
I am asking that when R by S ratio in mu phi and mu six will be less than one. Less than one, sir. With the right answer. Top we top we can. No, 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 no. Sir, in the ventricular tachycardia. No, no, no. Not ventricular tachycardia. Regular ECG recording. And you can diagnose the RVH by looking at the electrocardiogram. Okay. It is in core. It is in core problem. In core problem. Or probably you can see R is patterned from V1 to V6, and R by S ratio in V5 and V6 will be more than one, and they can have associated the right axis deviation. And this R by S ratio less than one is taken as a criteria for the diagnosis of right ventricular hypertrophy in uh, core pulmonary emphysema, core pulmonary, and emphysema the, because of the uh, the uh, the uh, hyperinflated lung, the uh, heart may be slightly pushed backwards. And that is said to be one of the reasons why they, these patients can have a smaller, deeper pattern from V1 to V6. So when you see uh, V1 to V6 showing uh, R by S pattern, you must always consider the possibility of corpulmonary. Okay, right. Yes. So uh, does the uh, ECG help us to diagnose, or it negates our diagnosis? Zero. No, so it is a positive only, sir, because right axis deviation RVH is there uh, plus minus RA enlargement. Yes, and also, XH just 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 one prominent uh, main pulmonary artery solved put together. Yes, I think we can diagnose pulmonary artery hypertension, and we have to look for a cause. Okay, do we have an echo also? Uh, sir, echo report is there. Sir, actually, okay. uh, that uh, I was not the, able to. Okay, read the echo report. Uh, sir, dilated RA and RV cells. There was a severe pH. RV SP was around 56 plus 15, hmm. and IVC was around 22 millimeters. Sir, okay. uh, D-shaped LV, good LV systolic function, and thin layer of pericardial effusion was also there. Okay. So there was only mild, to, mild to moderate, mild TR was there. So not TR was not. Uh, they were not able to document so much of TR. TR. Uh, they could not get PR. Hmm. Yes, yeah. the PR they were not able to. Tapsi, TR, TR also. Tapsi they were 16, sir. But I don't think that uh, this was done by one technician. So I was not able to get that uh, final report, sir. Tapsi 16. Are you on 16? No, no. There is some degree. No, no, sir. Yes, sir. I, there is definitely RV dysfunctions. IVC is 22. JVP is raised. Dilated RA, RV. Okay. And uh, uh, and sir, thin layer of P also suggestive of there is the RV dysfunction. Thin layer of okay. P is. Okay, and uh, when a patient with uh, suspected RV RV dysfunction, if you are to do one more uh, echocardiographic uh, measurement, what will you do? You look at RV volume. RV volume. Uh, RV volume is very difficult. R if you want to. RV EF. RV EF. We can. Difficult. Uh, RV EF. I know it's not that easy. Uh, RV volume. If you want to do really, you have to do a 3D echo. 3D echo, you can measure the RV volume. Otherwise, in 2D echo, it is almost difficult to measure the RV volume. Saroj, uh, what is the other measurement that will help you to diagnose? GLS, global longitudinal strain. Oh, okay, global mm -hmm. longitudinal strain can be done. Uh, global longitudinal strain can give an idea about the uh, uh, RV dysfunction. Another thing that you can do is fractional area change. You can measure the fractional area change. Uh, Shane, what's what is fractional area change? Any one of you? Fractional area change. Uh, sir, uh, in the short axis view. Uh, uh, you need not go from to, short axis uh, view. What is uh, the? I see and. Uh, no, it is not uh, an left-right angle. So we need to measure uh, one dimension. Uh, 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 horizontal to the uh, uh, interventricular septum, other dimension that is a uh, D1, and other one vertical to the inter interventricular septum D2. Uh, you need not do. You, sorry, need, sorry, don't you need not do all those things. You trace the uh, ventricular border, and you get the fraction area change. You get the area. And uh, then uh, from that you take systole and diastole and find out area change. What is the normal area change? What is the normal area change in a patient in a normally functioning right ventricle? Around thirty-five percent. Thirty-five or above. 
If it is less than 35, yeah. that indicates associated RO dysfunction. This is something we can very easily do. You will look at the volume in the apical four chamber view to the cystone dust and uh, find out what is the various change. If it is more than 35, that no indicates normal RV function. It's a very uh, easy, it can be easily done and is very reliable. So in a patient with uh, TAPS 16, where you are, you are doubtful whether there is associated RV dysfunction or not, you can uh, uh, you can measure the fractional area change. Okay, so now uh, you have come to, so how, what is your approach to the problem? How are you going to treat? What are you planning to do? Where are you? Where are you now? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Sir, I was taking water, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I was taking water yesterday. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, what are the uh, what is your approach? Yes, sir, we will we'll evaluate the patient sir, for all the causes of uh, pulmonary hypertension. Yes. Sir. First of all, and we'll rule out that there is there any treatable cause. Including for thromba, thromba and pulmonary artery hypertension. So, if it is primary yes. pulmonary hypertension or uh, contributed by some other comorbidities, what will be your approach? So, then we'll start on uh, dual therapy, sir. Uh, no, no, first of all, you see, you see, she has got a lot of comorbidities which can lead to pulmonary yes, like OIC, yes, obesity, all those things should be first looked after. So, yes, you are, either if she's saying OIC, that should be treated. If she's saying obesity, that should be brought down to ideal weight so that that will be also help in the reduction of the pulmonary arterial pressure. So, comorbidity yes. is to be treated and then you will use drugs. And what are the, what is your drug treatment? So, we will use combination here, sir. Yes, you have to use combination treatment is recommended. What is the combination that you are going to use? Uh, sir, ERA antagonist and uh, PG uh, and uh, 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 Prostacyclines, prostacyclines. Prostacyclines. What is the problem with prostacyclines? It will lead on to hypotension. No, no, no. that's all right. Only problem is the prostacyclines. Uh, uh, tablet is available. What is the prostacyclines tablet available? Selective pack. That is available. I, I, don't, I don't know whether it is available in India, but as a uh, 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 prostaglandin ta tablet is being now now getting marketed. That will be a very effective tablet. Uh, but we do not know. We do. I, I don't think it is available. I, I I don't have any experience also. But uh, what are the other drugs that can be used in India? So here we will use mesitentin and uh, this uh, our uh, uh, sildenafil. You tell the group. Tell the group. Groups of drugs which can be used. PD, PD5 inhibitors. 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 PD5 
uh, oral uh, prostacycline also is coming up and with that the progress of many of these patients have significantly improved and uh, if the patient is not responding is there any other surgical treatment or any interventional treatment is it balloon at your septa stomach sometimes sometimes you can make uh, when the uh, pressure in the right atrium goes up and up you can do a septostomy and that can uh, relieve the congestion of the right ventricle but those patients do not do very well but in an extreme case you can actually do a septostomy which can actually get decompress the right atrium and the uh, no, and the uh, uh, the symptoms of the right heart failure can be uh, brought down and nowadays the people can implant valves actually valves uh, at the site of the opening of the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava which can actually close when the pressure goes up uh, disproportionately high and that can result in protection of the systemic venous congestion okay and uh, if the patient is not responding what is the treatment gauro heart lung cancer heart lung heart lung transplantation the patients can undergo heart lung transplantation and uh, sometimes uh, of course it carries a high risk but then uh, for a completion sake you should say that patients with primary pulmonary artery hypertension if they are not responding and they are steadily deteriorating they are candidates for heart lung transplantation actually so this patient in uh, uh, how her uh, this uh, six minute walk test is around less than 200 only sir and there is systemic desaturation also on exercise no this patient i think there are a lot of comorbidities mm. and if you look after any uh, obesity and also oisa and other things and then uh, after uh, all these things have been looked after uh, there will be uh, she will be i think she will do extremely well with the drugs which can reduce the pulmonary artery uh, hypertension or no pulmonary artery pressure so we have started sildenafil and mesi 1010 we have started sir. okay that's very good what is the dose that you have started sir mesitan 10 and sildenafil 20 tds okay very good that can be given or in nowadays i think there's a one tablet is available where there's a combination of mesitan and and plus uh, uh, tadalafil so that the patient need take only just one tablet once a day it's very convenient dosage both the drugs act 24 hours and just one dose is enough and it's a combination tablet and uh, uh, um of course uh, you have to treat the pulmonary artery uh, elevated pulmonary artery pressure but i would consider that other comorbidities like anemia and oisa should be looked into and that also should be aggressively treated and also as uh, sarvaj has also pointed out uh, many of some of these patients when they are steadily deteriorating and significant pulmonary uh, systemic congestion and these patients can be subjected for a septotomy septo 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 actually you have to make an opening in the inner atrial septum so that the right atrium can get decompressed we should also go first with the vasoreactivity test take a pardon sir vasoreactivity test oh yeah you want vasoreactivity test what do you mean by vasoreactivity test sir uh, in vasoreactivity test sir, we give vasodilators okay uh, Uh, so the uh, blood pressure should not so uh, cardiac output should not decrease oh. uh, and so we have to see whether the pulmonary artery pressure is decreasing or not oh. without how much, how much should it decrease uh, 3 by 10 3 by 10 no no what what pressure should fall so pressure should not fall uh, more than 20 eh? uh, Uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, what is the criteria for vasoreactivity of the pulmonary vasculature? Go ahead. The fall of systolic. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, sir decrease in systolic uh, pulmonary pressure by ten, sir. No. By ten millimeter of. Uh, Not correct. Criteria is usually only for when you are testing for Eisenmenger syndrome. But I would like to uh, like to uh, you like you to tell me what is the criteria for Eisenmenger uh, no no reversibility of pulmonary artery hypertension by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, challenges by the vasodilators. Sir, uh, yes. what I I was telling was that like uh, after giving the vasoreactive agent, the uh, systemic pressure 
should not fall more than 20. Oh, systemic pressure should not fall more than 20. Okay, right. Yes, yes. They are commenting about the system. They say, actually, cardiac output also should not fall. When you are looking at the permanent vascular, uh, vas vascular reaction, and the, the cardiac output should not fall, and the systemic pressure also should not fall. And uh, there should be a drop in the uh, the permanent artery pressure. Mean permanent artery pressure should I drop see. more than 10 millimeters. More than. And also the main permanent artery should be less than 40 millimeters of mercury. Two criteria should be satisfied. Yes. One is the uh, main permanent artery pressure fall should be more than 10. And when it falls, it should fall below 40 millimeters of mercury. 40 millimeters. Main permanent artery pressure of 40 millimeters. Yes, sir, main only. Main. Yes, sir, definition is also some main only, sir. Definition yes. is also main pulmonary artery pressure. Yeah. So, that also can be done. Uh, I think, uh, any other doubts? I think it's 9 o'clock now. Any other doubts? I think, Gaurav, you did very well. Good discussion, good case, excellent case. And I think uh, there was a lot of points to be discussed. And Srinivas was also discussed well. Srinivas, I think, uh, you were, of uh, course, uh, uh, we, we are a quiet person, but I think you have discussed reasonably well. Uh, Saroj also discussed well. Very good, Saroj. Thank you. Yeah. So, next week, what, uh, what will we have? Shall we have some ECG discussion next week? Would you like to have some ECG discussion also in between? Or you would like to have a case? If somebody can bring a case, then we can have a case discussion also. Saroj, can you bring a case? I will try, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, uh, good evening, sir. Ronak here, sir. Oh. Uh, sir, our exam schedule has been uh, declared, and the, this time pattern is OSCE pattern. So, could we have OSCE discussion? What discussion? Uh, OSCE pattern discussion. Uh, just now, uh, the, our exam uh, schedule has been uh, declared oh. for June 21 session oh. uh, for practical exam, and the pattern is OSCE pattern, sir. Oh. What, what do you mean by the OSCE pattern means? Uh, sir, the, it's like a spotter's examination, like uh, uh, 25 spotters is there and okay. we have... That, is a, that was the pattern for DNB examination previously also? Yes sir, yes sir, same same pattern has been declared sir. Oh, okay. just, just now declared, it is oh, one hour okay. before. So we can have um, uh, multiple spotters from ECG, X-ray, echo, yes, pressure yes, tracing. Sir. Okay, yes. we'll, uh, we'll bring a mix, a mixture of all those things. Yes sir. yes, sir. So we can have a discussion on uh, few few cases of ECG, few uh, pressure tracings, few yes. uh, echo uh, clippings, and also one or two X-rays. So we can have around 20 or 25 uh, clippings can be discussed. No problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that will be of help for those who are appearing for the DNB examination in the uh, coming weeks. Yes. Okay. So we'll do that. Yes. Any other suggestion? So next week we'll have, uh, oh, next week there's a problem. Next week oh, I may not be available because uh, there is a Christmas Eve, my children are coming. Okay. There's a problem. So we will have a week after next, not next week. Next week I, I may have a difficulty because uh, my children are all coming. So uh, they are in, uh, in Mumbai and Delhi, they are coming. So I may not, uh, so... Next week, I think we'll not have a discussion. 24th. Next week, Friday will be 24th. So, so we will not have a discussion on 24th. 31st, we'll have no problems. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. 24th, we, we cannot have. Okay. okay. So, please uh, tell others also 24th, we, we won't have a class. And we'll have a class on 31st. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 Right. Thank you. Okay. Right. I think you did very well. Okay. Good. Good Thank case. you, sir. Thank you. Discussion. Very good. Gavira, you did, you did very well. Excellent. When are you appearing, Gavira? Next now, next uh, uh, August? Yes, coming August, yes, sir. Coming August. Coming August. August, yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Okay, I think uh, you, are, you are improving steadily. Uh, in between, you are not able to, uh, you, are, you need some more theory reading also. You are a clinical discussion, so all right, need some more theory so that you are able to answer questions. Uh, uh, some of these questions which are coming out of this theory, theory uh, practical uh, practical uh, questions which are coming up in, in the clinical examination, you, know, sh you should have some theoretical background also, so that becomes easy for you to answer those questions. Okay, right, good night.
good night good night sir good night uh, after two weeks now okay thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir with your permission shall we conclude yeah yeah we can conclude thank you thank you thank you thank you very much thank you